And then go back to them again and show them ideas, show them concepts. Don't build your whole product, don't just start building. Show them the minimum amount of work that you can do to find out if they find this to be a valid solution. Um, and after you're doing it, you've done all that maybe a couple times, I truly believe you should never ask a competitor, sorry, a customer, how much they would pay for something. Ask them how much their competitor would pay for it. Because at the end of the day, this phrases that entire question differently. Because everybody knows if you have a competitor, you want them to pay the most possible that you could ever come up with. So you're making some real value, and true owners truly understand uh, how valuable your product is. And also when it comes time to say, uh, you know, when, when we're ready for this, do you want it? They're thinking, well, I sure want my competitor to have it. So that you have all these great negotiations that you can start right there. And congrats, all that went well, you might have a good idea. You need to do that 10 or 100 more times to actually find out if your ideas work. There's no more. Make sure you're paying attention. So the second one is a, um, there's a belief that you need to have a business plan and you need to build an LLC and do all these things before you get started. And I have to say, whatever you do, absolutely do not create a business plan. I know the MBA students and MBA you know, professors and business side may be rolling their eyes at you at this moment, but at the end of the day, this is the least likely thing you should be doing. And here's why. The business plan is really built out to have any number of these things, uh, even some of them twice. And uh, when you go through that as a startup, almost none of this is actually valid to what you're doing at this moment. You need to spend your time doing other things, not just spending your time doing the document. Because business plans truly are for when you need a loan or if you have a business that you need to set a plan for. So instead of building a business plan, I want you to create a plan for your business. And it sounds like I'm being a little coy with this, but at the end of the day, I'm talking about when you do less of this, then we do a lot more of this, of this, this, and this. You need to be spending time with your customers. You'll be amazed when you find out from customers and mentors over a cup of coffee or especially a beer. And so you really need to spend as much of your time as possible with your customers because that's the most valuable resource you have during the start. And you have to validate your ideas absolutely at every stage. And to help you do this, there are two uh, books that I really believe in. Uh, they're based on the business model canvas and value proposition design. This is what co-starters, we've heard of that program, and other accelerators are based on. And they'll help you set a plan for your business. And the value proposition canvas will help you truly find product market fit uh, for your business and really prove and validate what you're doing. And so when I very first started, my very first startup, we actually sent a proposal to Captain Morgan of Captain Morgan Spice Room. Uh, and three days later, they gave us a phone call and said, all right, we're in, we want to do this. Where do we send the $90,000 check for half the pay? And we said, uh, we'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> we had nothing. But we immediately sat down, created an LLC, did all the paperwork, everything right in four days, and we launched a business that was validated by them calling us back. So this myth, uh, we're in this weird position right now where we see all these businesses that are making just tons of, of they've got these massive user growth, they're doing all these tons of raises, they're pulling in lots of money. Uber just lost $5.2 billion, more than most companies will make in their lifetime in a single quarter. They've only raised $20 billion to date. So in four quarters, they're gonna have to make massive cuts and raise a ton more money to stay viable. And uh, Silicon Valley and the rest of the investment world and the entrepreneurship world has changed. You actually have to have a business built into your idea. If your idea is just to go out and get a bunch of customers you'll figure out later, you're gonna have a really hard time moving forward. So you need to build a business that makes money. And I had this advice sent to me a long time ago when I very first started. And they said, ask yourself every day, do you have a uh, business or do you have a really expensive hobby? And that, that guiding principle has really helped me because it's easy to throw money and time into something and then you have this great hobby that doesn't make any money. But if you ask yourself this, this will prevent you from running the wall very quickly. Well, the next one is that entrepreneurship is this social and extroverted experience. We always see people that are uh, going to launch parties, they're speaking at conferences, they're pitching at the big stage of you know, different pitch events. And they're always hanging out with entrepreneurs and groups, but more often than not, it feels like this. You feel isolated by yourself because the world feels like it's on your shoulders and it's really hard to talk to your friends and family about what's going on in your business. Again, they want what's best for you. You make choices 
that are best for you to make a jumping ship or being selfish on something. But your core role, core role of uh, owning your own company is to make decisions that are best for the business. And so again, you return to the space where you feel like you're just trying to climb this mountain world's on your shoulders. But you're not alone. This is why, uh, one of the reasons I helped co-found Startup Tricities. It's an organization of entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs that is one half, hey, we're gonna help you get started and uh, do mentorship. And I say the other half support group, so you kind of ride that roller coaster of entrepreneurship and what it's like. And we really only kind of enjoy this. Uh, so you know that at this time. And this uh, myth is probably why I'm getting on my soapbox just a little bit here. I've been very frustrated by hearing this over and over again. Is that there's just not enough capital here. And it, this is just a poor excuse. Thanks to Uber and all these people that have raised all this money and they've changed entrepreneurship for a whole, um, and it's a whole. Uh, we're at the space where you actually have to build a business. You need to go out and build your app. You need to build your business, sell it, market it, and get through that stage. If you can't get through that initial phase, that's probably the easiest part of getting your business going. How's an investor or anybody think seriously that you can grow this into this you know, massive, awesome business or unicorn if that's your dream? And other companies are doing this. Other companies in Tennessee, not just in Nashville, are building and raising uh, and investment rounds and doing this. And they're finding their own way to go out and do this. So you can too. And the best part about entrepreneurship is you get to decide what this man needs. You want to create something that's just you and a few friends that you know, sells and makes money? That's awesome, that's great for me. Other companies like MailChimp, which they are a unicorn, they're making $400 million and they've never taken a single bit of investment. They still own all the stake of their company. And they bootstrap that completely on their own. And so my advice to you is come up with your business and bootstrap it as much as possible. Get it to the point where you just get stuck and you can't grow it anymore and decide if you do want to grow it, then you can actually go get VC money and really take it further. But the worst comes worse, you have a business, you can modify a pivot and make it even better over time. So if you can build it and get funding, you can make this happen. But you gotta stop making excuses and go out and figure it out because the successful Tennessee businesses right now are doing this and you can't do it. So we're gonna talk about risk too, because everybody thinks entrepreneurs are these risky, crazy people. And they really are talking about when uh, you need to go quit your job, go all in, and cash in retirement, quit school, and go start this business. No, come on. <laughs> it's just that dream again, right? It's that also. If you go to Silicon Valley right now and you find people who have a lot of new startups they're working on, they're doing side hustles. They're probably driving for Uber when they still can. And you should do it. And it's all doing everything you can to extend that runway. Give yourself the best chance of success. But there is risk, so let's talk about risk. This is a waterfall at Bear Elk, just outside the area here. And I love kayaking, so that's me in the picture. And but people think I, I used to think I was so cool, people thought I was cool for watching this. In reality, people just think I'm nuts. <laughs> That's a little pride hit, but they don't see the 17 years took me to build my skills to do this, or all my friends that are surrounding me uh, with safety in case something goes wrong, or all the countless hours I spent uh, trying to you know, make sure the first time I did this it go well. <laughs> But it's all about calculating the risk and entrepreneurship is the exact same way too. And so a study came out, you can ask yourself this question, but when entrepreneurs were asked how risky of a situation they'd gamble on, if they could make a $5 million business but a you know, 20% chance or a $1.25 million business with an 80% chance of success, what would they choose? And overwhelmingly they chose the most uh, conservative answer based on uh, experience, age, gender, all the factors. And it makes sense, because it's all about taking that calculated risk and doing something as you move uh, forward. And so give yourself that runway and extend it as much as possible, give your chance. <laughs> all right, let's do that. Anyway, the final myth is really kind of driving me crazy too, is that it can't be done. And I've gotten the best and worst compliment of the group fund, is that they've taken that, looked at it, and said, ha, oh, I just never thought this was built here. I get what they're saying, that's kind of cool. You know, a little ego pride, a little ego boost right there. But at the end of the day, I sit there and say, why not? Eastman and ETSU and our medical space is a testament to innovation that was here. The whole Appalachian region was built on innovation and survival. And so when I hear this, it really drives me nuts because also this is already happening. Action VFX is a special effects company that has gotten started. They shoot fire and atmosphere effects and they 
sell those to movie and film companies, and they are, they, they're doing phenomenally well right here in Johnson City. They've been into some of the best TV movies you've ever seen. It's a fraction of what's there. We also have companies doing medical devices. We have the number one uh, small pet product store in America on Etsy is based on the Tri-Cities. We even have a coffee roaster that doesn't just roast coffee, they can collect their flavor profile and find coffee all over the world they can give to you that you will love every step of the way. This is just a fraction of what's getting started here. And so it can be done, it is being done, and maybe it's your turn now too. We'll leave you with one last story. And I was walking down the street, and I saw a guy who was laying stone. And I said, hey, what are you doing? And the guy said, you know, I'm laying the stone here, and I'm getting paid $35 an hour, I'm providing for my family, my kids are going to school. I just, I just couldn't be more grateful, this is amazing. And I looked at him and said, wow, that's a really detailed answer, but that's really great for you. Sign for me, that's awesome. And I, kept, I continued walking down the, you know, the street, I saw another guy who looked like he was doing exactly the same thing. And I said, you know, what you doing? First answer was great, so might as well find out what this guy's today. And he said, well, you know, I'm laying the stone here, and I know you can't see it, but I'm really building this cathedral. It's something bigger than myself, and I just can't wait for you to see it. And then he paused, kind of looked over his shoulder, made sure his boss wasn't close by, and he said, if I'm really, really being honest, I have the greatest idea for an app. <coughs> and this app won't just change you know, our local community, it might even change the world. And I've been working extra hours and you know, long days to try to make this a reality. And I can't wait for you really to see that too. And that person, I truly can relate to. Because that person is the, the real entrepreneur in America. And I'm really hoping that some of you out there have ideas or you're pursuing something, you're taking it to that next level. And you'll let all these, these crazy myths and all these ideas of what an entrepreneur is and let it become something special to you. That's something I'm trying to do every day. And when you do take that leap, I hope you do. You don't have to do it alone. I hope you join the local entrepreneurship community and start Tri-Cities, and hopefully we can help support each other together. Thank you guys so much.